I'm probably more inspired by like corruption with anything. It's just our species. We take advantage of other people. You know, we're all driven by money and we get that thing called greed. And once that takes over, you don't really think about anything else other than how you can acquire more. Tip the scales somehow. It doesn't matter if it's in your backyard, if you're hurting people or if you're hurting somebody you can't see. Currency, the root of all evil. Through whatever medium you choose, whether you're singing or cooking, making paintings, if you really are just being yourself, anybody could really be an artist, pretty much translate to any part of how you do something. Is it a reflection of you? Ideas can start in a sketchbook, just throwing around lines from a pencil, and it can develop from there. Or it could start from an idea, you know, something that starts from behind the eyeballs, and I try to bring that into the tangible world. If I'm just pushing materials around or maybe gluing or cutting things away, you know, something will happen. Finally stepped away from something I was making, whether it's a painting or a sculpture, and I say, this is it. This is what I was looking for. And that only lasts for a day or two. And then it's back to the drawing board. That feeling of accomplishment does not last as an artist. So I'm always trying to look for the next thing. And along the way, it's a progression thing. I'm always trying to do better than the last one, too. And so I can beat myself up, and I'm sure a lot of people are like that. You know, you're trying to top yourself, top yourself over and over again. I might be blue because I'm not like working on something that I'm, I'm proud of at the moment. It could put me through a lot of emotions. Most of the time it's good, especially painting, because painting is so immediate. You can lay down lines or lay down color, and it's right in front of you, and it's very easy to manipulate. Therapeutic is something you have control over. And it's nice when you don't have control over it too, like let's say if you're using really runny paint. Sometimes it's nice when there's a balance between control and uncontrol. I'm 35 years old. All the time I spent making artwork, instead I could have been doing a lot of other things. I'm always in the studio pretty much alone. It's nice to have a dog at least around. She remembers where all of her squirrel encounters are. I get a lot of compliments on her all the time. Somebody ditched her at a kennel. She looked dead in the crate. So I said, I'll take the dead dog. And then after a couple of days, she perked up. Now she has a lot of energy. We're good friends, so. And she is a good studio dog. Not doing artwork for the money, not doing it to get the babes. I'm just doing it because that's what I do. It's part of my identity. If I didn't do it, I probably would have some type of identity crisis. I basically just go to work to get money for art supplies and to pay the bills. All my money really goes back into sculptures or paintings. hard for a certain work to jump out and grab your attention. So I guess sometimes when I'm looking at a lot of artwork, I try to think about what would I want to, what do I want to see, create what I want to create, what do I want to bring into the world. I'm making napalm. These are for the red canna paintings. And so it's a mixture of powdered sugar and tiki fuel. You know, with that violent process of just fire, people actually experience that on their skin. I was curious of what nature does after a war. Found that red cannas were the first flowers to pop up after the bombings of Japan on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They kind of popped up through some of the rubble and it gave the Japanese people hope that there could be life after this. And so basically I'd put that homemade napalm solution on like steel and I light it. The steel would go through a violent process of being engulfed in flames and the steel actually expanded, like making poppy noises. I'd let that cool off, I'd brush off the, some of the carbon, I'd leave some of it on, and now go in with oil paint and a palette knife and start painting cannas, do different layers. And after every layer, I'd, I'd add a layer of castable epoxy. Reclaiming human error, that's what that was all about. Looks like a real shithole in here. What's nice about having a small place, though, it doesn't take long to clean, but it doesn't take long to get it messy, does it, baby girl? <laughs>
this little joke we have together. Since childhood, I've been really into drawing and making things. Like I used to make my own toys. I used to draw my own cartoons. And it's kind of developed. And it was always a way just to get away. Like uh, being in school, once I started school, I'd always be kind of drawing in the margins of my notes. Teachers would tell me to you know, focus more on class, but I'd be more interested in what I was drawing at the time. Sometimes the sculptures are playing with that, like who I think might be taking advantage of other people. I just think he's crazy. He's a total nut. He's just a horrible person. The Westboro Baptist Church community, you're pretty far out there. You really, you believe in a God that much where you're gonna like hurt people you don't know. I don't wanna insult the kids, but it's, you know, Fred Phelps, he's the brain behind it. it kinda interests me that people could be that crazy. It interests me so much to where I'll make a sculpture about him. And you know, I try to deface him too. That's where it gives you know, a little bit of power over them, almost like a voodoo doll. I'm making a giant voodoo doll and then I kind of deface the person I just made. I want to go after him, even though he's dead. It's like, you know, he desecrated a lot of dead people. He'd actually go to their funerals. So yeah, fuck Fred Phelps. He's gonna burn in hell. And sometimes I wonder like if they actually saw the artwork, they'd probably be flattered that they're on somebody's mind to that extent. Supposedly the average time of looking at artwork is seven seconds. It'd be nice if I can get people to stick around and look at something for longer than seven seconds. I want to provoke a thought. Something that didn't cross their mind earlier, whether they're upset some or makes them happy, check it out, come to some sort of conclusion, whether they stick to their what they already think or maybe it'll plant a seed. Or maybe they'll come back at me with something and I'll change my mind about something. I'm okay with that too. Any advice for artists? Yeah, you're gonna be around a lot of people that are not quote unquote artists. You're gonna get a lot of people that don't think like you maybe. If you're happy with what you're doing, if you're drawing, you're painting, or if you're cooking, whatever it may be, just don't give up because there's a lot of people like you. And they're around and there is people that appreciate it too. Your parents might not know about it. Your parents might not be saying, I want you to do your artwork, go to your room, do your art. If you're passionate about something, stick with your passion. Don't do something you don't want to do. A suicide. If you enjoy making artwork, you gotta find some way to do it. Don't deny yourself of who you are. I still consider myself to be the kid at the kitchen table drawing, and just making personal discoveries within the craft and exploring it further. I'm still on that exploration and it's still fun.